Okay, we are back, and we are done with all the chores we need to do in Brooklyn. Uh, we're four points short, but that comes from just getting the ticket, or showing the ticket to the guy um, eventually. And uh, we are heading off on the third route, which is the Cape Horn route, which, uh, spends, which requires you to spend most of your time on the ship. In fact, all your time on the ship, both above deck and below deck, so we'll get to see that. It's a little bit more dialogue involved, but uh, not too much more. Nothing like any of the new, v new I guess, newer VGA games, which are still pretty old. Um, I actually tried doing this beforehand and lost track of the time. I was having such a good time. So I didn't want to risk uh, having a file too big for YouTube, and it didn't go quite as well as I wanted. So I'm doing it over again, but hopefully uh, this will be an enjoyable video. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is going to try to talk to the crewman before giving him the ticket. And so the crewman says the ship will be leaving in seven minutes. Just to let you know that you can actually talk to him to get an idea of when the ship's going to leave, if, um, even if you don't know what it should exactly be on the game clock. Uh, however, uh, we've got plenty of time, and we can just get moving pretty much as soon as... Um, and the worker says, uh, all I know is that... Okay, that's a cold worker. I'm not going to bore you with his dialogue. We're going to show him the ticket, and we'll get going. And... All right, we're all aboard, ready to go. Um, and like I said, we don't have to do anything in Brooklyn. I took care of it. We got all, whoops, we got 56 points out of 60. You missed something somewhere. No, we got 60 out of 60. What's, what's the story? All right, well, that's clearly a glitch in the game. I can't believe we denied our congratulations uh, text box. What an outrage. Anyway, uh, I'm going to actually show you, show you the, uh, the ship heading out uh, onto sea. Uh, out to sea, pardon me, uh, because I've got a couple things to update you on. Uh, just some of the trivia, actually, that I mentioned in some of the prior videos. Uh, it turns out that $900, which is the cost of going to Panama, in 1948 dollars in is the equivalent of about $22,000 in 2008, which uh, was the last, I guess, a series that I had that was available to to uh, calculate the rate of inflation or, or the value of money in the present day time. And that is uh, a lot of money to go on a trip. I think outside of a very expensive, a rather expensive cruise, I uh, I don't know who, where you'd spend that sort of money on transportation. So Jared's putting up a couple bucks to get to California. And I guess he's really, really hoping to strike it rich. I guess he also wants to see his brother, but uh, <laughs> other people are paying that sort of money. They're really, really expecting to be some serious gold in uh, the hills. Anyway, uh, th though it does note that the house that we paid, uh, that we sold, we sold for $850, which is probably about, I don't know, somewhere around $20,000 in today's dollars, which, as you know, you could not buy a house, I don't think, anywhere, at least in the United States for that, and certainly not in Brooklyn, certainly no, uh, nowhere near New York. Uh, people probably pay monthly rent like that. So I guess the real estate was uh, a lot cheaper, both in real and, uh, well, in real terms, as well as in uh, just uh, the price. So, um, uh, nominal prices, that is. So anyway, uh, that that's somewhat interesting. Also, um, I found out something about, I uh, looking, was looking up what an isthmus is, or I, I guess I knew what an isthmus was, but if there were any other famous ones, I guess I foolishly didn't realize that the Suez isthmus is also a famous one, where the Suez Canal is. Um, pretty much they did the same thing that they did to Panama, um, to connect two larger bodies of water. Also, uh, the town of Madison, or city of Madison, Wisconsin, is actually built on isthmus, and I guess is the only city in the U.S. built on an isthmus. So there's some interesting trivia. Uh, if it comes up a Trivial Pursuit or something, uh, you know that now. Anyway, we're aboard the ship. We're playing Gold Rush. This is Scott, and um, we're going to go around talking to some of the folks on the ship. There's not too much going on. Uh, as you see at the bottom, it says con press Control n for next scene. I believe that triggers the next part of the event, but there's some interesting things you might want to see. I don't want to shortcut uh, the trip. Um, and so I'm just going to make sure I keep a little bit better eye on the time and make sure um, we can hopefully get through this whole portion before the next set and um, do that in this video. So let's get moving. We're going to talk to man. All right. What are you guys, What are you going to do when you get to California? We ask. One of them says, I'm going straight to the town of Columba, uh, Coloma. I've heard there's gold aplenty there. The other man says, I'm with my partner. I'm heading straight for Coloma. And you see the pig running back and forth. Apparently there's a pig in, well, at least two of them. I don't know if there's one in the Panama trip. There was one in the stagecoach portion. Let's see what the first mate is, has to say. The ship's first mate says, I've been sailing with the captain many years and have never had a mishap. You can count on a safe trip. This guy's kind of interesting. 
Uh, he asked, actually invites us to come back. Well, we'll see what he has to say. Eric says, Hi, Jared. We're one day closer to that California gold. This is easier than I thought it was going to be. I wonder if this is the guy from the grocery store, since he seems to know us. He replied, That's right. One day closer. I'll drop by and talk to you later. Okay, that sounds great. Make sure you come by again, says Eric. That's the only one that we actually kind of have a friend on, I guess. It probably is. I guess it was a blonde guy, wasn't it, at, uh, at the grocery store? I'm not sure. Anyway. Though it is interesting that the guy at the... Why am I not going down the stairs? That's pretty weak. There we go. Uh, that the guy at the grocery store first in, uh, calls us sir, if he knows um, who we are. All right, anyway. Talking helps pass the time on such a long, boring journey, and talk the captain can do. He always seems to have a story to tell. The captain thinks for a moment, then says, Did I ever tell you about the time I broke the existing world record for the quickest trip from London to Hong Kong? Well, and he doesn't have much to say. That's pretty much what he says every time you talk to him. All right, continuing on. And let's see what the chef has to say. The cook says, We have plenty of provisions right now. If we start to run low, then we'll invite the ship's mascot to dinner. The man sitting at the table says, I'm heading for California to make uh, enough to buy a farm in Pennsylvania. Then I'm going home to my wife and kids. So he's pretty optimistic about what he's going to find there. Let's see what this guy has to say. The engine man dissertates. This baby has been outfitted with the latest in high-pressure steam engines. When the captain gives the command, full steam ahead, I give her everything she's got and blow the whistle. All right, this is the bunk room. There's really nothing there for now. I think at some point people could, might be sleeping there, but we'll find that out. All right, it's so unfortunate you have to go all the way back to the other side of the ship to get up the stairs. They didn't build stairs on both sides of the ship, but it's also kind of funny that it's the same ship regardless of whether you're going to Canada, uh, pardon me, Panama or uh, the Cape. <laughs> I guess it just depends. So many things depend on Jared. Uh, this is the one the few times nobody actually cares that we are not in control of the ship. Um, there's actually a captain, there's actually somebody in charge, uh, whereas the other times we have to make a lot of judgment calls. Conversing with these men, you learn that they wish to put their shovels to better use in the gold fields. And there's actually a shovel there, we can't, that's just the boiler room down there, we can't take the shovel, at least not now. Um, and both of the guys say the same thing. Alright, so we are going up, the, up to the uh, deck again, and there's a couple, a uh, few more people to talk to. And there's the pig running back and forth. I guess he's intended to be food. Um, the For now, the pig is the ship's mascot. Later, it will be dinner. Because I couldn't imagine there's much other use or reason to have a pig uh, hanging around. Unless, I don't know, if there's some superstition about pigs bringing good luck. Here's our buddy. It doesn't look like the same guy reading the Bible every time. You see the man reading the book. We are on our way to California, but we have a long trip ahead of us. The man continues, You are right. It's going to be a long trip, and you'll want something to read. Take this book. I'd like to give it to you. Please take it. You say thank you. You're welcome. And you can actually talk to him again. What are you going to do with all this time you have on your hands? You ask the man. He replies, It's a long voyage to those gold fields, I figure. I'm just going to relax and enjoy the ride. Sounds good. And we'll talk to these guys to finish it off. He asks these men, how much gold do you think you're going to take out of those California hills? One of the men replies, I'm not greedy. If I can fill my hat every day, I'll be happy. The other man replies, I fear we'll arrive in California too late. By the time we get there, most of the gold may be gone. Well, probably not the best idea to spend 600 bucks on a ticket then if you uh, are that pessimistic. Um, before we're heading out, let's take a look at the Bible. We should probably read the Bible. And you see the book of Genesis. And we can get the points for reading the Psalms. So read Psalm. And Psalm 23, it is, The Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. All right, so that's what we need to read. That's what we need to uh, do. And we are coming up on the end. So I am going to pause the video, save it, and we will be back um, next time and see what else is in store for us on the ship. Bye for now.